These two go together better than peanut butter and jelly. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 times Emily Blunt and John Krasinski made us believe in love. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at all the adorable and funny moments that make this couple one of the most relatable in Hollywood. Number 10. Their Red Carpet Love It isn't uncommon to see googly eyes on the red carpet, but what Emily and John have is definitely next level. Not only do they look at each other like they're the only ones on the carpet, but they're also physically affectionate and constantly making each other laugh. What's like your date night like with your group of friends? What do you guys like to do? Eat. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much, I think, I, would, I think it's the same as everybody else's date night. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the water slide of chocolate fudge, which we do every <laughs> night. Even with paparazzi screaming their names, you can always see them whispering to each other. They're funny individuals, but together they glow. It's clear that they're best friends and have a dynamic everyone should strive for in a relationship. Number 9. John's Obsession with the Devil Wears Prada Before even meeting Emily, John was totally obsessed with the masterpiece that is the Devil Wears Prada. Are you wearing the, sh the Chanel boots? Yeah, I am. You look good. He's so obsessed that he's reportedly seen it 75 times, which he has admitted might actually be an under-exaggeration. Even though Emily plays a snarky receptionist in the movie, this is where John's love for his wife truly started. And then John also told me that he has seen Devil Wears Prada 75 times. He's kind of stalkery like that, yeah. It's a little, little weird. weird? Yeah. No, I'm touched and honored. He also knows all the amazing outfits in the movie by heart, and even has his favorites picked out. Despite the obsession, Emily isn't creeped out by him and admits she's flattered by it. Number 8. Scuba Diving on Their Honeymoon I have a big phobia of sharks. I feel like there are sharks in any mass of water. Well, you know, whether there? it's a yeah, pond that's or... That's where they yeah. live. They live They're in the water. Guaranteed. <laughs> While honeymooning with John, Emily Blunt faced her fear of sharks head-on by scuba diving in shark-infested waters. Clearly, this wasn't entirely her idea, but she went along with it anyways. And I lost it five seconds, and I was like, get me out! <laughs> So wow, fun. you cave under pressure. I mean, I you do. say no, and then I he know. says, yeah, just jump in, and you just jump in. Her reward for being brave was a shark swimming right past her head, which caused her to faint underwater. While most of us would probably be back on the shore vowing to never set foot in the ocean again, Emily's no quitter. Luckily, a sweet sea turtle made the whole thing worthwhile when it gave Emily a comforting pat on the head. Number 7. The Battle of the Accents. But uh, no, I, I, I shook her hand, and to be honest, I knew, uh, I knew right then and there that I felt uh, uh, everything I needed to feel for. John is from Boston, USA, and Emily is from Wandsworth, England, so they have very different accents. It's something they love about each other, but when it comes to their children, Emily wants them to speak in the Queen's English. Oh, really? <sighs> Please. Boom. It's been an ongoing battle since their oldest daughter Hazel started talking. The three-year-old has flipped back and forth, but Emily continues to hope for a little English accent. No matter what, Emily is determined to be called mom and not mom, which really isn't too much to ask for. Have they enjoyed it? I mean, very well. I'm quite happy that Hazel is back to saying water as opposed to water, which yes. she started saying. Number six, ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. This is the biggest container I could find. Here we go. Oh, yes! Oh! It's always touching when celebrity couples get involved with a good cause, but Emily and John do it in their own unique way. John was the first to take up the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, but claimed to be on location and tried to get away with just using a tiny mug of water on himself. Emily was quick to correct the situation by pouring a huge bucket of water on him. Getting sweet revenge, John decided to dump water on an unsuspecting Emily while she's carrying groceries up the driveway. It's a fun and unusual approach, but one that helps bring attention to ALS. Number 5. When John Started Cooking It started with a Mother's Day gift to Emily. Okay. It's pretty sad that that's what impresses her. That just goes to show you how unimpressive I am at home. <laughs> to surprise his wife on Mother's Day, John decided to try his hand at cooking. He made a delicious meal of roast chicken to pay homage to Emily's English heritage complete with a side of veggies and lemons in the hole. <laughs> the that old... sounded like some war term. Lemons in the hole! <laughs> At best, it's a war term. Emily must have really loved the meal, because later she made a bet with John on the actual age of Leonardo DiCaprio. If she was right, then he would cook once a week. 
but if he was right, then he would get to play Call of Duty once a week. Needless to say, John has been getting a lot of practice in the kitchen since he made that fateful bet. I would have sided with you. He's older than He's 41. 40. Oh, no. Come on. He really, he should be cooking dinner at your house. <laughs> yes, I agree. Number four, the Jimmy Kimmel School of Perfect Acting Skit. John and Emily have shown remarkable range in their various roles, but nothing flexed their acting chops more than this gem of a skit. Stand up and put your mouths on each other. Go ahead. No kissing, just mouth pudding. It features many big name stars being forced to do crazy things by the great acting coach Jim Kimmel. John and Emily's part starts off steamy, when they're told to breathe their lines to each other. But it ends on a very sad note when Jim makes them divorce. You're not married. John? I said we're not married. You know, when he's, when he's right, he's right. And, um, and sacrifice is, is art. They may look convincingly devastated in the skit, but in the outtakes, they can barely keep a straight face. Number three, love at first sight. And it's one of those things where, you know, as soon as you meet someone, you... You, you knew right know. away when yeah. you met her? Yes. Love at first sight may be a bit cliche, but we romantics at heart can't get enough of it. The year was 2008. The place was a restaurant somewhere in L.A. And I looked over and it was Emily Blunt, and uh, I was incredibly nervous because I was a big fan and probably too big a fan of the Devil Wears Prada, so I tried to contain my excitement when I met her. John wasn't looking for love, but all of that changed the instant he nervously shook Emily Blunt's hand. He was a big fan thanks to his Devil Wears Prada obsession, and so he blurted, I like you, when they first met. Clearly his unique approach won Emily's heart over, and the couple were engaged a year later. He is my perfect man, you know, he's funny and warm and bright and confident and sort of a very emboldening person to be around. Number two, their prank war with Jimmy Kimmel. And we have a holiday tradition that was started by them a few years back. Three years ago, John and Emily broke into my house. We've seen the prankster side of John from his role in The Office, but this is a delightful new side of Emily. When Emily and John moved in across the street from the Kimmels, a tradition of Christmas pranks was born. The prank started out innocently enough, with John and Emily setting up a little Christmas display in the Kimmels' house. Over the years, these pranks grew into a full-blown war of epic proportions. Some highlights include John and Emily's house getting transformed into the North Pole and Jimmy's office being turned into a winter wonderland. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. How many times have you been to see the play? I will have seen it by the end four times, which I feel is very wifely. It's, it's pretty <laughs> solid. It's like a solid number. How long was the run? It's only six weeks. So. Six weeks? Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's really good. That's strong. So Don't I get went, crazy. It's I not that good. The... <laughs> <gasps> number one, when John crashed Emily's acceptance speech. Part of being in a loving relationship is being happy when the other succeeds. In this case, John couldn't contain his excitement. When Emily won a Critics' Choice Award for her role in The Edge of Tomorrow, John, who was presenting next, ran on stage to give his wife a big hug and a little peck on the cheek. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> He's presenting next, so... The happy squeals Emily makes when she sees her hubby are absolutely adorable, showing just how much John means to her. If this isn't a moment of pure love, we don't know what is. Finally, to my sneaky husband, John Krasinski, <laughs> for being okay with the fact that he was married to a veiny, sinewy wrestler for the duration of this film. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.